Hello friends, welcome again to my shop today where I share great ideas. <clears throat> the idea that I want to share with you today is something that's been around for quite a long time. It's called the Longworth Chuck and it's used to uh, uh, turn the bottoms, uh, help to turn the bottoms of bowls. Now there's a lot of other things out there uh, that you can do that with that people are using a lot. There's something called cold jaws and then of course there's uh, the uh, friction uh, chuck where it uh, just uh, pop, you have to lay the piece of wood and it pops onto there. All those are excellent ideas but uh, I find uh, the Longworth chuck is super good. It's uh, fast and easy. It's very very cheap to make and uh, I didn't make one for many years because it looked kind of complicated but after I decided to do it I found it quite easy. There's lots of good information on the uh, other YouTube uh, channels there but I thought I'd step you through the uh, making one uh, because sometimes you pick up one thing from somebody and then pick up some other things from somebody else but uh, I'll try to uh, be a little clear. Uh, I was on the web and somebody asked about making one and they somebody responded they said oh don't even bother they're they're not the greatest and uh, there's cold jaws and so on and so forth but if you go to cold jaws you have to pretty well dedicate a chuck uh, for that purpose it's I find that uh, trying to change jaws on chucks is just a pain and it takes up time and and uh, <clears throat> it's nice to have something that's just plain dedicated to what you're doing and uh, that works well. Um, the only disadvantage I see on this is that uh, you still have to use a tailstock to hold the uh, bowl. I guess probably depending on the shape of the sides to do the lathe work on the bottom but then you can take your tailstock back and and uh, you just sand the, to your heart's content on it. it. It works super well. When I first got it going I had a bunch of bowls that I had got around to doing the bottom so before long I had half a dozen bowls that had real nice bottoms on there. Real, it's actually a joy to use. So anyway I'll uh, show you what materials to use and how to go about it. So just stay tuned and uh, we'll get busy at it right away. Let's talk a little bit about materials before we get started here. Uh, you can use probably most anything. Plywood would work work well. A lot of people use plywood. Uh, I'm using MDF and I highly recommend that and that cost shouldn't be a problem on that because if you go to a local uh, cabinet shop they have pieces that they're throwing away every day and uh, pieces that I have here came from uh, Advantage cabinets. Anyway, um, it's just what I had. This is a piece of half inch MDF and uh, it's got uh, melamine on one side. That's no problem. I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to do my layout on this side so you can see the lines better. So what you do is you you can go corner to corner to find the center and uh, then draw one line corner to corner uh, and uh, then of course the other direction also will, will find the direction the center but uh, when you have this line done on then I've taken a square to get a line 90 degrees if you notice this one doesn't line up to the point. It lines up over here and that's because this piece is slightly uh, rectangle. So don't uh, um, rely on your piece uh, going corner to corner for to get a 90 degree uh, angle in here. But if you have a, a accurately cut one of course you can do that too. Um, and then uh, I drill a little hole in here to hold the compass which is a good idea. I've also did it here and here. Uh, the, uh, 
We also need a line uh, 45 degrees here, exactly in half here. Uh, that comes through there. So you'll have a line this way and a line this way as well. Now, uh, <clears throat> the other piece of MDF I have that came from the cabinet shop too is a piece of, it's got wood on both sides, nice mahogany on each side, but they throw it away. Why not use it? Doesn't just makes a nicer. Thing. Two pieces there. You want the reason I'm recommending MDF uh, is because when you go to the routing stage, it just routes uh, to cut the slots in it. The routing uh, just goes so nice in the MDF. It's really uh, really easy, and that's one of the parts that uh, you know people don't make. Uh, these too often because that looks just too complicated but it's super easy it's really easy anyway uh, yeah so I bisect how do you bisect an angle this is one way to get it exactly halfway between use your compass and uh, put a little line there you can just adjust the compass anywhere to stay on your work there and that crosses right there so now it's just a matter We'll see how accurate we are here. That goes right through the center. I did both of them. I think it's a good idea to do to do the both sides, and then you can check so you don't have any errors. And uh, once you put your first diagonal, which was here, you could put uh, your compass here and uh, bisect that angle too. Okay. Um, I've drawn a circle on here, uh, which you may be able to see, and I'm going to cut that out. I drew the circle a little bigger than my piece here, because uh, uh, we're going to lathe it round, and uh, it gives a little material to, to round down, and you'll see the reason for that fairly soon. Okay, I've cut the uh, both circles out, uh, cut the bottom piece out uh, using the same compass setting and uh, mark the center here with a drill so the compass doesn't slip out. Then I've measured the diameter of the faceplate that I'm going to use and uh, drew a circle on there the same size as the uh, thing there. That way I can put this on and screw that on right smack in the center there. So I'll uh, go ahead and do that and then we'll be ready to the next step. Okay, I've got the faceplate uh, put on there. And uh, yeah, here's a little trick, not trick, but uh, another idea that I, I do is uh, make your own face plates. You just take a, a one inch nut and then you get a, lar a l washer and one of the large washers when you it'll just touch catch the corners of the nut and it's all clamped down and you just have somebody put a little bit of weld on there or do it yourself if you have a welder and uh, then you drill your holes in and I think it costs probably four dollars for uh, all steel face plates. Uh, I make up quite a number of them so you don't have to you can yeah, dedicate one to something it doesn't matter what it is but anyway um, use the largest screws that you can preferably not to come through the outside but uh, in my case the little tips here just barely push the that wood up there just took a little grinder and uh, took the tips off there and that gives me a, a good hold with the screw, you know, because you know you're not just, you, you're holding the whole uh, thickness of your wood. That's, it's quite important because you're going to be using this thing for a long time. And uh, try to get it uh, centered, of course, there. Um, oh, yeah. I put it on, then I took it off again. And then uh, put a little... Uh, some CA glue in the holes where I screwed it on there and then screwed it on again. So that kind of locks it up tight and uh, maybe strengthens the uh, material in there where the screw goes into. So, so the next step here will to be mount this on the lathe and then uh, 
going to, and then we'll screw our pattern on there. Now, um, I don't recommend just uh, putting that on, screwing it onto that top of that, even though you've marked it out uh, with a compass with the same setting there, because it's important to get this where we laid the circles out uh, right on on center there. So, and to screw it on, um, the first time I did it, I just used three screws and just kind of put it anywhere I thought, but uh, uh, that's not a, that worked. But the trouble was when I was cutting the slots, some of them interfered with the slot. So after I've, of course, I had the slots all done and then you need holes for your finger to put in there to rotate it. And uh, since I've got it done, I just circle, went through, put it in the right position and uh, drew the circles on there. You can see that there. So uh, let's just take a measurement there. If you got your, your cross like this and you're going around like that and your hole here comes out fairly nicely at one and a quarter inches, one and a quarter inches from the uh, from the line there, from the, or the center of it there. That might be something to go with. The reason I want to do that is I'll put my screw here to screw it together. Then when it's all done, take it apart, and then I'll take that wood right out there on the top one. Uh, uh, for my finger holes and you'll never know it was ever screwed together. Just a, a hint there, an idea you might consider that. But that's an uh, inch and a quarter off from one of your cross ones there like that. Okay, so I'm going to get this screwed on the lathe and I'll show you how to screw this on here. Okay, I've got the mounted on the lathe, the first disc with the face plate there. Now we want to screw this one that has our lines on there to that right exactly in the center. Now, uh, if you wanted to, to just put it on, uh, if you didn't have any lines, you could just get it all screwed together exactly center right away and then put your lines on after. But it seemed to be a little easier when you got your square piece and you go corner to corner and lay out and so on and so forth there. But important to get it center now I didn't go through all this when I made the first one here so I'm, uh, you can see some of the errors I did and uh, trying to steer you in the right direction there so just with it held in your lathe and I put the screws where I figured out where the little hand thumb holes for your fingers to adjust it are now I'm just going to go ahead and screw it on and then we'll be able to uh, go to the next step, which I'll be showing you in a minute. Okay, I've uh, gone ahead and started my layout there. I don't know. Yeah, you should be able to see that there. Uh, since I want to make a duplicate of the first one that I've made, uh, I use the same measurements. Now, uh, the outer line that I have here is just to round it out, and I use the same dimensions here. Just uh, whatever you're making it, you could make it for any size lathe you want. So you just have a round piece that fits your lathe. And then uh, you need two circles. Now, the first circle here could anywhere be, say, three quarters of an inch or uh, an inch from the outside or a couple centimeters if you go by centimeters. And then you need a, a line somewhere out from the center there and I use two and three quarters or in this case here it would be let's see seven centimeters seven centimeters um, and that could vary you want it to be bigger than the face plate that you're using a little bit bigger than the face plate that you're using so those are just you can just kind of do that arbitrarily where you you like it there and then the next uh, line that you have to have a line that's equal distance between the inner one and the outer one. So if I measure that, it just so happens I'm going to use that scale there. It comes out to seven centimeters. Centimeters kind of work well. It's 
So I'm going to turn it on. And then at the 7 centimeters, make a line. So I'll just get a little closer there so you can see what's going on there. There you can see our lines now. The, uh, this is, we're going to lay this material off to here and then that's our outer one. That'll determine how far out the uh, slots go and this one determines how far in they go and, uh, and this one is for uh, setup and that's all there is to it. Very super simple. Uh, two lines arbitrarily on your surface and then one halfway between. Of course, you've got your uh, vertical. Uh, two sets of lines 90 degrees uh, apart or 45 degrees between each line there. So anyway, I'll go ahead and lay this down here now and uh, then we'll go to the next step. We're almost done. Well, so far it's been a walk in the park. Uh, very simply, all we've done is taken a, a disc that fits our lathe and uh, mounted a faceplate to it, used two pieces of wood, uh, laid them round. And uh, then we made a circle in the center that was bigger than our faceplate and one around the outside that's in a ways. And, uh, then the only other one that we had to use a little bit of math on was this one here, which is equal distance between the inner and the outer line there. So all we had to do was divide by two, and that's not too, too hard. And uh, we've screwed them together, and so we got solid. We've mounted them so they're center, and we drew these lines on the lathe which is a good idea. I didn't do that in the first one and it, you get more precise if you do it like I showed you there. And then on these intersection points uh, where we had our 90 and then the 45s that we put on there. So we got uh, the eight lines there 45 degrees apart. Um, you could use a protractor. Or I used the square. Uh, you use the principle as dividing a line with a compass there, intersection point. And what I've done here on, on the, uh, wherever this center line is, I marked it with a, a pointed tool because uh, that's where we're going to use our compass from. That's where we're going to use to swing our router from too. And then I've, uh, I've drilled it to the size of a of a nail, any nail that you think might work. So, so that nail will fit right inside there and that'll be used when we do our routing. Uh, very simple idea. So that's all there is to it. Then uh, we could just go from here and just go ahead and route it, but it's nice to put the lines on there and you can see what you're doing. So I've, I've put on a couple here. Uh, let's see. We'll go from here, and let's see this one here. Okay, so we, it, most of your uh, instructions will call tangent to the center line. So that just is that distance there. And then we swing our compass out to the outer, the outer line there. And we'll put on four lines. So. That's that one, and then we'll switch to this one here. And we must have one more to put on here too. Get the wrong way here. Anyway, I got Okay, I'll set it down and then I'll put the last one on there. But you just need four lines that 
swing between here and there, and then we'll show you the next four uh, arcs to put on there. Okay, I put the four lines on. Uh, take any axis you want, just the 90 degree axis, and uh, draw your line so they tangent to the center one there. Now we're going to put on the other four lines. Now, I've already put one on here, used it right in here, and brought it down to the line, uh, to the inside line. Now, if we route a slot through here, we route another slot all the way to here, there's not very much wood in here. So it could be a, a little bit weak there, but being it's got a back plate, it'd probably be okay. So I'm just going from pictures that I've seen what other people have do. So they do another set that's shorter. And uh, you can decide that for yourself. But what I did again is uh, just divided the distance between the center and your next line in half. And, uh, that's, and then you can draw another circle around there like that. I think I can do this. Okay. Now, that one that I just put on there, I think it's this one here, will stop here rather than there. So we'll just go to the next one. We'll have to skip one here and uh, put, put one in. So Okay, and we'll stop at that line there. It's a little awkward here. There, we'll stop at that line. So that's where we're going to stop, okay? So I'll go ahead and uh, do the other two, and then we're ready for uh, our last stage, which is routing the slots. It hasn't been difficulty. It hasn't been difficult. Outer line, center line, inside line, that whatever is bigger than your tail stop one halfway between and then your lines just tangent. If you're doing a small one you probably only want four four stops anyway but being that this is quite low I'm putting eight stops so that means eight slots but the second set of slots that are in between the first ones need to stop a little sooner and uh, you can decide on that uh, that amount but that's all there is to it. There's uh, very little measuring to do. Okay, I've got all the lines on there and I took a felt pen and uh, just outlined them so you can see them a little better. This is where we want to stop here and uh, we'll stop there and of course the long ones are going to be a little bit longer there. So, And then you want to clamp that into something or put it on a pale because we got the, got the thing on there and we want it elevated a little bit but I'm just going to put it in the vise there and then I can tighten it down and I'll have a space in there. Uh, the only other thing you need and uh, is your router. Now they have circle cutting things that you can put on here. I just found this piece of aluminum here and didn't even cut it out and drilled some holes, uh, screwed it on there. And uh, then I've laid out, uh, I guess it would be the distance from the center here to where our hole is there. See, that hole there is the distance that uh, we, when we use the compass to put the arcs on there, that'll go right through the center there. So just a matter of, of uh, putting a hole there. Now, what I did here is I drilled these holes here for a, a nail. So the nail would fit in there and then the nail fits uh, through that hole as well. So when we put that on, we'll put our nail in there and uh, we'll swing it around there. So, you know, the only measurement that we actually made was just these ones here divide by two. That's all there is to it. So um, I've uh, put a, the router bit in here and you, you use quarter inch uh, router bit. Now uh, this is a carbide bit, uh, at least that's what it said when I ordered it, and downward spiral. Um, 
I almost think an upward spiral will work better, but I guess they put downward spiral so when you cut right through, your dust is always going underneath. Uh, I've adjusted it for the thickness of my material here, which is just a little bit more than uh, what it's designed to cut. But since we're going to cut it, cut in, uh, we'll cut down so far and then we'll cut it down a little farther and down a little farther, it, uh, it won't matter that it's, uh, it's overextended there when we cut through the bottom there. So uh, I'll get this all set up and uh, then I'll maybe run through one slot with you. Okay, I've got the router on here and uh, what I did was just have it set for small amount to make my first slot there and uh, <coughs> if this had been a plexiglass of course you could see through it you could see where your router bit was so I just went uh, gradually gradually and back and forth till I got it to the place in here where it's the tangent to your inner circle and then uh, come out to the outside circle there and uh, then we'll make cuts in between there and there now to make this simple and so it uh, uh, easy and you don't make a mistake I've uh, first of all made that trial and error you might say and then I've taken a nail and uh, to my outer limit once I had that to the outer limit put a nail in there come over here to the outer limit put a nail there now I can just swing it in between there up in there and it'll stop exactly at the end of my slot so it's kind of a no-brainer you just go ahead and do it okay so um, let's just go ahead and cut the slot here um, we'll uh, turn it on maybe leave it at one side in case there's a thing there so we'll turn this on just a matter of uh, depending on the type of router you may have a plunge router just adjust it down <coughs> a small amount now making some dust here so we need to clean this out of course you could use compressed air uh, that works good you get a lot of dust in the air um, should have respirator on which I didn't so far and uh, or a vacuum cleaner just vacuum it out I'm going to try the vacuum cleaner. Last time I used the compressed air, but got quite a bit of dust in the air. So I'll uh, clean this out and then we'll get back and uh, finish this slot up. Okay, there's the, uh, the first slot done. Uh, outside to tangent. And uh, just got seven more to go. Um, It works very easily to do. That's the one thing nice about MDF. It cuts so nice and smooth there. Um, I did it in about four or five uh, different uh, sessions there. Keep dropping the cutter down till like it got all the way through. Uh, a lot of people use stuff that's a little thinner than this and uh, the bit would fit through quite easily. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up. Uh, Trial by error, getting the to the outside edge to where I want to stop, and then my two little nails drive in there for uh, stops, and just back and forth, back and forth, uh, vacuum it out. Uh, couldn't be much better. I like the vacuum a lot better than the air. Uh, it was almost no dust in the air that way. Okay, so I'll just keep plugging away here. It won't take very long. Okay, I got all the holes done. 
once I got started, I just three passes and I was through. So it actually went very quickly. You can't make a mistake. You got all your holes drilled where they're supposed to be, and it's super simple setup. I just couldn't believe how actually easy it is to do the setup. Just your inner circle again, your outer circle halfway between, and then your pivot points all the way around. And uh, since these are shorter, or just went halfway between again, put another line, and that's where those ended there. So, anyway, that's all there is to it. Rent through, check your holes to make sure they're all good. Yeah, and I was ready to undo my screws, cut my holes, and I thought, oh, I'm not quite done yet. What you have to do is drill a hole in the center here uh, for the pivot, so it pivots around. Uh, one of the sites I looked at said quarter inch, the same a size as this, but that's kind of small. I think a little bit bigger would be much better. So maybe we'll go 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths or something like that. Anyway, I'll drill that out and then we'll take it apart and put it together. We'll be ready to use it. Well, here we are with a basically a finished proje project. Uh, I've taken it uh, apart, of course, and drilled uh, the holes here for the, uh, so you could put your finger in there to turn it, turn it, and uh, you flip the, this is the opposite side now, I just, you just flip it over, so then your uh, spirals are in, are crossing. Now, the only thing we have to do now is to, uh, oh yeah, I put a, a dowel in the center here. I actually didn't have one the right size, so I uh, machined it down uh, so it was a nice snug fit in there. So it'll uh, spin there well on there. Now, here's uh, the uh, stoppers that I'm using. Now, there's possibly commercial ones. And I don't live near a store or anything, so I wasn't able to go look for stuff. But uh, these, I uh, have a friend that I uh, used to work in the high school for 35 years. And uh, a friend of mine that's working there now stopped by because I'm making that other one that I had, I'll give that to him. He's got the, the lathe too. So uh, we got these just tried stoppers from uh, test tubes. Uh, and we picked up a few there, but uh, and I thought, well, they're pretty stiff, you know, they're, they're quite stiff rubber. But um, I found that they're actually they did work well for me. So uh, it's just a matter now of uh, putting them uh, through the with the stopper on the out. Um, yeah, I'll just mention on the bolts here too. Get bolts that are flat, flat, that go flat almost all the way through and then it'll line up. You get other bolts that got threads all the way up, but they're loose. And then uh, I just took, a, took it on a, done something and tapped that through the hole. The hole's a fair amount smaller, but uh, it, uh, you can tap, the, tap it through. So, and uh, that goes on there. Um, through there and then the other side um, you get a, a big washer this is a big washer it's called a fender washer and uh, then the fender washer goes on it gives a nice wide surface there and then uh, oopsie uh, not looking what I'm doing here and lost that and then a wing nut you don't need uh, bolts or nuts that you have to tighten with a wrench. Just a, a wing nut is more than adequate. So we'll just put a couple in here. Now what you need to do is make sure you put the the long one through to the long one on the other side. When I did the first one I didn't notice it that I actually did a long one with a short one and then when I went to uh, take four of them out for a small bowl. Uh, these small slots, you use it on small bowls. Uh, hey, that thing's not put together right. 
Now, what did I do here? I got a, yeah, I got a short one here, with a short one here, long one here, with a long one here. Now, when you tighten these things up, I actually should, should put a, a quarter inch washer at the top here, on top of there. I think that would work good. I didn't, didn't have any, so I didn't put it in there. But you can tighten that up with, by hand, just your hand pressure. I'm all, I'm all the way down, and the thing uh, squeezes down and expands, it expands out, and that holds your bowl uh, on there a lot stiffer. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and assemble all of these and then show you what it looks like on the lathe. And we're all done, ready to use. Just a matter of a few hours and you can have one of these made and uh, works fantastic. Okay, there it is. Actually, it took me about 15 years before I got around to making one of these, but I uh, wish I'd done it many years ago. It, you can finish up your bottom of your bowl so much faster than using a a plate with a groove in it and pushing it up against and all the other things that you have to do there to do that. And I don't have cold jaws and you pretty well need a chuck so maybe there's $150 for the chuck and the jaws and and if you're doing any amount you don't want to keep changing it. Of course the other setup of course is vacuum chuck which would work good too but and that's kind of an expense to set up if you're just doing it for fun. So uh, yeah, it pivots around the center there, that's important. And uh, you can see how those things expand and contract there around your bowl. So I'll just throw a bowl on here and you'll see how it, uh, how it goes on there. Make sure these things aren't too loose when you start. Just that zipping it back and forth there. Loosen them up a little bit. Okay. So it looks like I got a. Maybe there we go. Okay. And you just push it up, have your lathe locked up so you can't turn it. Lathe locked up, and then uh, as soon as you get, uh, push them up tight. Then one side, then uh, one on the other side. And it should be held together. There we go. It's not gonna, it doesn't take much in it and it won't move there. So usually then what I do is unlock the chuck and uh, just go around and tighten them up. You can tighten one, instead of tightening them all on one side, I t sometimes go to the other side. Now what's important on something this size is you've got to have it locked up to the spindle quite a bit. Some of your lathes have a set screw that you can tighten up so your the when you lathe in reverse or sand in reverse it doesn't uh, come off. But I found when you start your bottom you're going to have to take some material off and uh, if you don't have the tail stock up against it, it will start to vibrate out. Of course, that depends on how how you've done the rim of the bowl. Now these are quite straight, so it's uh, stuck on there. So, um, so I'm just going to bring this uh, tail stock up here because I don't want it to spin off there. Okay, let's see how. Oh, this thing turns. Just looking at it here, where these things are, because I went through those uh, being quite accurate on uh, putting your circles on, like drawing the circles right on the lathe when it's spinning, you know you're going to get it uh, perfect out from the end. I didn't do that when I did the first one. I just laid it out and then put my face plate on and hope for the best, I guess. But this one's spinning much, much better. It's very accurate out here. 
Uh, if you notice, this here is not as accurate because that was done off of the the other uh, the other one that I made. Mean. But this one here is considerably better than the other one. I'd say it's pretty well perfect. But just go back through my video and uh, do those little tricks that I showed you along the way how to lay out the circles. It's so simple. It's just Inner, inner circle, outer circle, halfway between, and that's where you do your, uh, you use your compass and the uh, swing your arcs to make these slots here. Uh, I don't even have five dollars in this thing here because I made the face plate. Well, probably five dollars because I had to buy the nut and the screw, and then these bolts I think were. Yeah, probably, well, less than $10 anyway. Less than $10 totally. And I've got a, a fantastic chuck that I can use uh, to do your bowl bottom. I highly recommend you making one of these. It's good to have it hanging on your wall as a conversation piece or whatever. People ask you how, what, it's, what it's like. What's that used for? You can explain it to them. And, uh, yeah. It's just a lot of work to set up cold jaws unless you have an extra chuck. Anyway, uh, and it's so that's the uh, Longworth chuck, uh, completely made, uh, super easy to make. Uh, don't be afraid to make one, and you'll be happy for the rest of your life that you did it. Anyway, it's a great accomplishment. So, thanks for watching and. Uh, Every so often I'll have a, another video up here with some new ideas or whatever. I don't do things specifically just to make videos. It's kind of things that I'm working on. Uh, one of the next things I'm going to do is how to cut threads on wood. So I'm working on that right now. Anyway, I'll see you next time.